John Ruskin sort of an interesting case. He's so sort of Victorian and so of his time. And he, he was, of course, famous as a supporter and promoter of, uh, of Turner. And what's interesting about looking at these drawings of Ruskin is that you see he, him trying so hard. I mean, he wanted so hard to be a great artist. And, you know, he admired Turner, but he wanted to do his own thing. And he worked really sort of obsessively. He had these sort of rules and he had these sort of systems for making making pictures. And he did many studies of sort of natural objects like leaves and, and rocks especially and stones. And I, I really admire his obsession with looking at the world and recording it. And there's a lot of artists and writers who do that. And, and that sort of obsessive looking at the world and recording it is really fascinating to me. And I, and I, and I identify with it, I guess. But it's also a sort of cautionary in looking at this watercolor of a chestnut leaf in a room with Turners, and you realize your limitations. And I think it's also sort of important to realize what you're good at and what you're not good at. And I think, you know, if it was just effort, Ruskin would have been a great artist. But it's more than effort. It has to be some sort of, some sort of magic or some sort of luck or some sort of... Um, some sort of mojo that happens and to remember that that other part is some sort of gift that you can't control and that if you do make something that really works, uh, you are incredibly lucky.